Hey everyone, this is Jordan with Food Bevy, the online community for food and beverage founders. And today I'm talking with Gayatri, founder of NAM. So love to ju jump right into it. Love to hear about your business, how you got started and what the product is. Yeah, um, and Happy New Year to everyone. We're actually talking, this may be shared later, but we're talking on the first day of the new year. Um, so really excited to kick this year off with this um, opportunity to share my story. So NOM is a first of its kind, uh, no added sugar and no added oil vegan cookie made with 10 or fewer ingredients and 150 calories or less per cookie. Um, and it actually came about just as a result of my own personal challenge. So before I went off to business school, I um, was a full-time consultant. I still have, I'll come back to that. But it meant I was on the road a lot. Um, and I was just looking for something that I could snack on late night without feeling guilty. I happened at the time that Nam came about in my mind, be staffed on a project in the middle of nowhere in Illinois, where truly like a Panera bread was the savior of my life. Like that was my only eating option. And I recall I was working late. It was past midnight and I just needed something sweet. Um, but I cared about, you know, health, well-being, and I wasn't eating added sugar to the extent that I could control. So all I could eat was an RX bar and I microwaved an RX bar and sat there and thought like, this is really sad. I should really be able to, to find something that's nutritious and delicious that satisfies the craving for, I I've been a cookie lover for like my entire life. So that satisfies that craving without me having to adhere from my like dietary restrictions or choices. And that's when I was like, when I go to business school, I am going to change the <laughs> indulgent, healthy snacking landscape for other people like me, whether they're consultants or students or doctors or whomever, who just want something that hits the spot, but doesn't make them feel guilty. So. I absolutely love that. And how you kind of get started in this, in this space, right? It started from a personal problem that you experienced and able to share the cookies now with the, the rest of the world. Um, you know, one thing that we hear about a lot of like, if someone has an idea, they should quit their job and jump into it full time. And, you know, in two years, they'll be making $10 million, right? But like, that never actually works. So talk about your experience of working full time while starting a company and what that's been like. Yeah, it's so interesting, actually, because <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, I started NOM when I was in business school, and I was actually surrounded by both peers and professors who were like, yes, you go all in, you jump in, um, you go the venture capital route, or even if you're bootstrapping and doing friends and family, you like give up everything to, to go all in. Um, and it was interesting because I almost felt guilty not doing that. And I almost felt like, oh, am I giving it my all? Like, shouldn't I be, if I'm not fully invested, why would anyone else be invested in me? Um, I think that that can be the path for some people. And actually for some people, forget two years, in a year, you know, they're on like 30 under 30, they're exiting for some like 7X valuation um, or rather like multiple. And for me, I just had to be very real with myself around like, what is it, what is my industry? And the food industry is particularly tough on margin. And by that, I mean, like your profits are just very slim and you truly make money based on like volume. So you may be making like five cents a cookie, right? And your business is only going to do well and sustain you if you're truly selling in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of units. That That's just how large scale food companies work as well. So I kind of had to be real with myself around like, sure, I could have the aspiration of like, making millions of some large food company buys me and I try to, to, to sell my company off in two years, but let's be realistic. And I think for that, it also came down to what was my goal. And mine was to bring this product and solve this problem that was so personal um, to life for many people and to be able to like run with that vision whilst also like living my life. And for me, that was, you know, being able to, something as simple as like pay for a gym membership. Like that's something I would have to evaluate if I were a full-time founder. I had business school loans. Um, I am financially independent. So was supporting myself, couldn't look to friends or family um, to fund my like lifestyle and living. So I did make that choice of working full-time and it's by no means um, easy, but I think it's doable. And it's doable if you're okay, not getting caught up in what 
the founder's path is or what other people around you are doing. Because it's true. I actually, like, I have so many business school friends who are on 30 under 30 who've done so well. Some have, like, exited already. Um, and that's awesome. And they're full-time founders. But, like, it's okay that that's not my path, you know? I completely agree and commend you for that because, right, like starting a business or starting anything new is an extremely personal decision. And you need to make sure that it aligns, like you said, with your goals and what you want to accomplish with your life and how, right? Like running a nationwide, like large company with a hundred employees, like isn't for everyone <laughs> and not everyone will like enjoy doing it. A lot of people won't enjoy doing it, um, nor like, like just selling everything, your ideas to just grow the um, the company because along the way you end up having to make changes and sacrifices um, that might not align with your original vision so I commend you on that so talk about yeah. like okay no 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 go for it I was gonna add something but I can like pepper it in later if it's relevant it was about like timeline and like sustainability of growing a company but I can well, yeah, I mean let's talk about that in terms of like especially in regards to how 20 night or 2020 has gone right we just turned the page on a new calendar but it's just one more day right it's just a kind of date in our mind but talk about how things have gone this last year for you yeah so interestingly right I I'm, I'm still a full-time management consultant um and a big part of that, like I mentioned, was like, because I have loans to pay off and it, it allows me to like be able to afford my lifestyle, but also invest in my company, which is 100% um, bootstrapped to date. For me, 2020 um, was challenging, but also brought an unexpected blessing in disguise. So when 2020, um, when the lockdown started in February, March timeframe, I'm based in New York. So that's when they started for us, my commercial kitchen shut down. So I was like, oh gosh, like can't produce, like literally can't, can't run my business, can't produce. Um, what it also meant on the consulting front though, I, at the time, and I actually still am staffed on a project in California. So I was flying from New York to California, the coast to coast every day, Monday through Thursday. Um, and airline delays like factored in, it truly meant I was, I was usually just home like Saturday and Sunday and I would leave for the airport 4am Monday so like I don't really even count Sunday evening as like me being able to decompress or work on numb or, or whatever but now that 2020 became like entirely remote um, most of 2021 will likely be as well once kitchens reopened it actually gave me the ability to have more flexibility so when I was in California on like a given weekday I couldn't fulfill orders um I couldn't produce. I typically produced on the weekend anyway, just to like make it sustainable. But this agility that came as a surprise with working remotely um, actually ended up working better for me with NOM. We saw a huge uptick in online sales, um, especially as like retailers were kind of jammed in terms of like delivery as well as stocking. Um, so that was, that was super you know, surprising. And I'm very grateful for that. But the one thing that I was going to add around like sustainability and growing your business is 2020 helped me realize that if I had gone all in on NOM, I would have had to like shut down the business this year when my commercial kitchen closed. And actually I had a friend um, who had a healthy snacking company based in Philly, where I lived before New York, who decided to close her business this year. And, and she was all in and she had a great product. Um, there were these like great, like nut butter chocolate bites um and she was super passionate she largely though um sold to like college and university sports teams which were no longer on the road um like sports weren't happening and so it was a tough call and I think it made me realize like you know founders should also evaluate their risk appetite at, beyond founders 2020 has taught us that like things just happen um, and sure, we can't control it, but how can you position yourself in a way that you're like creating the safety net? I think the piece you said earlier too of like, some people do want to grow their business to a hundred people and, and some people just don't. I, I think that I try to dissuade founders or people in general from being that black and white. Like your business could still grow to a hundred people. It just might take 10 or 15 years versus two. I think we're living in this like, world that is so obsessed with like doing things quickly like scaling quickly losing weight quickly like making friends quickly like everything like really quickly right and there's nothing wrong with just taking a less steep path if anything I think it like allows you to be more balanced in your life and sure you'll get there more slowly but you would have like 
enjoyed hopefully your path to getting there versus like giving up everything, not being able to afford rent, not being able to afford food and like trying to scale your company and then six months being like forced to give up on your dream, you know? That just my point of view though. Yeah. That's just my point no, of view. No, <laughs> I completely I completely agree. And I think um you're right. And I see now a lot more founders who have had their companies for literally like 15, 20 years. Like one that comes up is Manitoba Harvest. Um, but they've been posting a lot just in terms of like, hey, this can take like a really long journey. Now we're successful, but it's been like two decades of doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that like real look and like what it actually takes to, to be successful. I love that. Um, and then I know you've just been doing this for, for a couple of years now, but if you can kind of reach out to other entrepreneurs who might be thinking about starting a business now during the pandemic or, or, you know, in the 2021, what advice would you give any new founder? So I think that for food founders, um, specifically, I'll start there and then I can, I can go beyond that. Um, I would say a lot of people are afraid to jump into like the food product landscape, just given it's like, typically very high touch, right? And since people aren't going out, restaurants are closed or retailers are like not trying to stock new products, people are hesitant. But what has also surprised me is like truly the power of digital. So even forget like the broader world, even I four years ago would have said, I will never buy my groceries online. I want to be able to like touch the potato and like look at the kale. Um, I order everything for all of 2020. I have ordered groceries online and I am very satisfied. Um, other than the times they sometimes send me like steel cut oats instead of rolled or the other way around, like the little things, yeah. like, <laughs> like that's fine. I'll take it. It's fine. I'm going to eat it either way. Um, but I think that I would say like, don't let, um, the barriers or the lack of like physical in-person connection, um, or ability to experience your product get in your way. Like work towards creating a, um, I like to call it like a minimum lovable product and like get it out there, right? You can still test, you can send friends and family samples. Um, sure, you can't be at like a farmer's market, but you can reach out to distribution boxes that like throw in samples here and there. So like use the power of digital. Um, and I think to like other founders in general, one thing that's been really inspiring to see out of 2020 is like, how a pandemic has sparked new startup ideas. So actually a friend of mine from school started an app for new dog owners. It's like like dog ownership, dog parenting 101 because so many people got puppies during the pandemic. I, I myself am like holding off every day I see a puppy. I'm like, oh my God, I want, but I'm, I'm pausing because I'm like, what if I have to travel again? Like the poor thing's going to be by itself. Um, but like you strife to to spark creativity. Honestly, it's like, it's what I did. I think Nam came about as a result of this own challenge, which actually the context, additional context I didn't share is I had like such a challenged relationship with food and sugar for so long leading up to that, that, you know, don't use this time where you're like stuck inside to truly think about, like dig deep about like, what is it you're trying to solve? And don't be afraid to push to do something, even if the world is shut down right now, like it's going to open at some point, right? And you might as well run out the gates, like with this incredible idea that you've been kind of like mulling over and, and building during this downtime. That's awesome. Minimal lovable product. I absolutely love that. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't coin that. It's like from some textbook, like I'm putting it out there. I'm like someone, someone coined that It's term, okay, but, but put that, put, put out the, the love in the world. I like that. Um, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Gayatri with Nam, thank you so much for being on today. It's so great talking with you and have a great new year. Thank you. You as well. Thank you for having me.